A man who has gaps in his memory and his daughter who isn't allowed to go outside live in a boarded up house with their cat who loves to read the Bible to help her relax. A book about abuse, trauma, and the amazing lengths the human brain will go to to protect itself from pain. The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward has been on my to-be-read list for a while and I finally got around to reading it. I was a little hesitant going into it because there was a lot of hype and buzz around this book in the horror community, but after reading it myself I can confidently say that the hype is justified. Starting from page one, this story is gripping and it doesn't let go the entire time, forcing you to keep reading. We're introduced to Ted, our point of view character, and we find out through his narration that it's the anniversary of someone he calls Little Girl with Popsicle. We find out through his memory that Little Girl with Popsicle refers to a picture that was ran in a newspaper about a girl who went missing while vacationing at a lake that's near Ted's house. They searched his home and he had to wait outside. During this time, a reporter snapped a photo of him and it was also run in the paper, which caused Ted a lot of distress. During this memory recap, we find out a few things. First, that Ted was suspected in a child abduction and possible murder. Another thing we discover is that Ted drinks pretty heavily as a way to cope, and through his rambling dialogue we quickly suspect that maybe Ted is an unreliable narrator and his understanding of the world around him jumps between that of an elementary school child and an unstable young adult. In this first chapter, Ted goes to step outside, and in the process, he steps on something in his bare feet, causing his feet to bleed, and he doesn't even realize it, until a neighbor points it out. And through this interaction, we find out that for some reason, Ted doesn't actually experience any physical pain. This first chapter also introduces us to Ted's cat, Olivia, who is very loving towards him, and we also meet Lauren, Ted's daughter, who is visiting for what seems to be the weekend, as she has to leave and Ted says, see you next week. In the second chapter, we are suddenly thrown into the perspective of Olivia, Ted's cat, which is a little jarring, but she has some human-like qualities while still acting like a cat. She talks about how she came to live with Ted, and how she feels very grateful and connected to him for taking her in, and how when she's feeling overwhelmed, she likes to knock the Bible off the shelf and read whatever passage the Lord happens to open the book up to. In another chapter, we are introduced to another character's perspective, Dee who is the older sister of Little Girl with Popsicle, and she has become obsessed with finding the person who has kidnapped her little sister, to the point of letting every other aspect of her life and relationships fall apart. I honestly feel like the general setup and introduction is about all I can say without giving too much away and accidentally spoiling something in the story. For me, the main drive that kept me reading was the obvious collision course that all these characters were on that for some reason centered around a little girl with a popsicle that went missing. Each of the characters is written wonderfully in their own voice and has their own distinct flavor, and it's made crystal clear that each one of them is an unreliable narrator in some way. And what I really like about the unreliable narrator trope in this book is that while they all can't be trusted, they seem to keep each other in check because they're all narrating the same events in real time from a different perspective. There are strong themes of loss, grief, depression, systematic abuse, and mental illness. The book does a wonderful job of weaving all of these concepts together and showing how they can feed off of each other and once the cycle starts, it can be impossible to break out of. There are some instances and descriptions of child abuse, both physical and mental, as well as confinement and torture. These scenes served the story and they were done extremely well. I didn't feel like they were put in there just to have some shock value added. This book was able to make me squirm and at the same time break my heart a little bit. The book doesn't try to hide the fact that the characters are unreliable narrators, and in fact, it wants you to realize it right away and then uses that against you. The entire time I was reading this book, I knew something was wrong, but I wasn't able to fully place what it was, and it kept me guessing until the very end. Right when I thought I had figured out what was actually happening in reality versus what was happening in the minds of the characters, another twist was revealed. By the end of the story, I was left with a strange and wonderful feeling of both sorrow and hope. 
The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward is a book of twists and unreliable narrators. A man with holes in his memory, a cat who likes to read the Bible, and a woman looking for her missing sister all converge in a violent, sad, and beautiful mess. The book is wonderfully written and the mystery is one of the most compelling I've read in a long time. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then check out The Last House on Needless Street.